Hey guys, it's Inka, and in this video, I will only be eating orange foods for 24 hours. So I am back at it again, finally doing this orange foods challenge. And honestly, I do think that it might be the perfect time of year to be doing this. There's actually quite a bit of food that is under this category of being orange. I'm thinking pumpkins, I'm thinking butternut squash, I'm sure there's more actually. As per usual, I will be only finding foods that are naturally colored orange. Something tells me I'll be eating a good bit of pumpkin. But before we get started, I just wanted to share that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. As most of you know, I love sharing new discoveries and learnings with all of you. And a lot of you always ask me, you know, how to develop basic cooking skills, how to take the best food photos. Well, I think Skillshare is one of the best resources out there for you to start developing those skills. They have a huge variety of classes. There's this really awesome food photography one by Daniel Krieger. And for myself, I'm actually taking some food illustration ones and it's been pretty fun so far. Best part is the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So definitely check that out and I really encourage you all to give it a try. All right, so with that being said, let's start shopping. Good morning, everyone. It is orange food day. Super excited to get started with breakfast. And here is what I have. You can see this huge fruit platter here. Here we have mango, papaya, cantaloupe, and carrots. Acerola puree, which I've been putting into my smoothies. Pumpkin pancake mix, pumpkin puree, pumpkin pie spice pumpkin butter. This is another one of those like seasonal items. I was thinking for fruits because there's so much going on here. I'm going to blend these up to make them into a very orangey smoothie. But first I'm going to get started on our pancake mix. All right, so I just poured out the pancake mix and it turns out that it really isn't that orangey. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to add a good bit of pumpkin in here and also an egg yolk. The instructions actually ask for an egg, but I think adding an egg yolk, maybe even two, will make it, you know, the orange color that I want. A generous scoop of pumpkin puree. So I've also added in a little bit of oil. The last thing I have to add into this is actually some water, but, and I don't know if this is kind of crazy, I'm actually going to try and substitute some of that with orange juice. Look at this color. It's definitely like a thicker consistency and I think that has to do with all the stuff that I put in, you know, the pumpkin and not really following the box instructions. I'm gonna add a little bit of this pumpkin spice now. It smells so good. I'm just going to go ahead and scoop some on here. All right, so that's pancake number one. So while I'm waiting for this to cook on one side, I'm gonna get my smoothie going. My carrots, cantaloupe, papaya, mango, acerola, which has now melted. So hopefully it's gonna balance out that sweetness. I'm also adding in some more orange juice. This is truly the most orange of orange smoothies. Let's go. Oh my God, all right. And that's it, smoothie is done. Now back to our pancakes. So I just flipped it and this is what it looks like. It is definitely a little more brown than anticipated. So I'm gonna make another one and make sure that the sides aren't as brown as this one. Breakfast is almost complete. All right, I am finally sitting down having made my pancake. I also plated it up a little bit. This is what I have. So we have the smoothie over here, which is a gorgeous orange. And then um, over here, there's the pancake that I've kind of tried to plate it up nicely. So this is actually pumpkin puree and honey. Um, this is blood orange that I thought would be a nice touch on top. And then these are golden berries. I love how this turned out. I normally love ordering things like this at breakfast places. So that's kind of where I drew my inspiration. Also, you can't see it on here because I covered it with the blood orange, but I actually put a layer of pumpkin butter underneath. These pancakes also smell very, very nice. It just smells so like cinnamony and pumpkin-y. 
All right, gonna go for it. There's definitely a lot of pumpkin in there, but there's a tartness that I actually think is coming from the orange juice. That was a little unorthodox. I don't think people normally put orange juice in their pancakes. The flavor after a while though, ties in together. So it's a little more sour, but not in a bad way. It almost reminds me of like mochi pancakes. This is like pumpkin orange mochi pancakes. If I eat it with the pumpkin puree, Pretty good. I just feel like it's a very like harvest fall themed um, breakfast. Whew. I will say though that this is extremely filling. Can't go wrong with smoothies, I really think, especially when there's so much like sweet fruits in there, like the mango and the papaya. Also, I just love this color. This is a pretty big breakfast though. I would say it almost feels more like a brunch. I think it's gonna take me some time to work through it. I will see you guys again later for lunch. Alvin came out to drop off the pasta sauce. Thanks, Alvin. All right, so Alvin just dropped off this sauce, this pasta sauce that smells really, really amazing, um, which I'm not surprised by, it's Alvin. I gave him the butternut squash I bought earlier and he transformed it into this creamy, sweet and savory sauce that has like a really wonderful nutty flavor. But that also means that for lunch today, I am most likely gonna go with some sort of pasta. Here's what I have. There's a lot of orange going on here. Three types of ravioli. I did go a little crazy. Butternut squash ravioli, honey roasted pumpkin ravioli, and also lobster ravioli, which sounds super bougie. Butternut squash, sweet potato, cauliflower, and orange pepper. Alvin's pasta sauce, and then there's some shrimp. I actually also have some salmon roe here, which I think could be nice to just top it off. I don't know how the flavors are gonna blend together. Who knows? A lot of this is really just about experimenting. So basically what I'm thinking, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna have a ravioli pasta dish and then roasted vegetables on the side with like shrimp to top it off and just make it into a nice meal. So first things first, I am going to roast up these vegetables. I'm just gonna combine all my vegetables into this bowl. Super, super orange. Even though this is already such a bright orange color, I was thinking for flavoring, apart from just like your usual salt and pepper, I'm going to add in these two powders. One is red curry powder, one is turmeric. There we go. Drizzle of oil. So now I'm just going to toss it together. There we go. Spread it out. It is looking so orange. Let me show you. Look at that. This looks oddly satisfying. All right, so now I'm just going to take this to the oven. Put this in. So vegetables are in the oven. I'm gonna give it a few minutes before we get started on the ravioli. All right, it's starting to smell really good in here. I can smell the curry coming from the oven for the vegetables. I am going to start cooking our ravioli. It is such a beautiful color. And the best part is when I'm looking at the ingredients list for all three of these, there is no artificial coloring and it's such a vibrant color. So the only tricky thing is that these all have different cooking times. So I'm gonna have to cook them one by one. All right, so ravioli is looking pretty good. There really is that variety of color going on. I love it. And then over here, I'm reheating the pasta sauce. So now it is about time that I combine the two. I'm just gonna toss the ravioli in here, turn up the heat. I'm just gonna gently coat them in this sauce. So I'm pretty much just going to cook this down until the sauce reduces into a thicker consistency. But over here, my vegetables are out of the oven. So I think we're pretty close to being able to plate this. I just need to fry up my shrimp and then lunch should be just about done. All right, it is done. It actually looks, I don't know, it just looks so much fancier than I expected it to be, but here's my finished pasta. Look at that. I'm very excited because there's like vegetables in here, there's pasta, there's like shrimp and salmon roll. I literally jam packed this with a lot of things. There's also a lot of different, I think, seasonings going on because there's the curry, butternut squash pasta that has like a sweeter taste, turmeric and that umami fishiness from the salmon roll, and also the lobster and the shrimp. So this is kind of decadent, I will say. Can't forget my drink. I have a carrot juice here. Look at this vibrant color. Wow. I am gonna dig in now. 
So I try not to cover the pattern here too much because it's so pretty. Look at this villain. Same thing for this one. The pumpkin one is a, it's like a generic pumpkin color, I would say. I'm trying the lobster one first. Honestly, even without the sauce, the lobster filling already has a lot of flavor. Let's try this butternut squash one. It's like butternut squash pasta and butternut squash sauce. Butternut squash overload. Oh, that's good. It's like something about like fall spices, I think. It's like kind of cinnamony. There's like a little bit of nuttiness going on. All right, so I wanna try this pumpkin one as well. Here we go, pumpkin ravioli and orange cauliflower. Mmm. So at first I wasn't sure about the curry part of this, but, and hear me out, it actually kind of works. There's just enough curry powder that I think, I don't know, it just blends together with that like nuttiness I was talking about. I'm like genuinely surprised. Also going to try this shrimp that I just very simply pan fried again with some curry. I enjoy that with the pepper and a little bit of salmon roll. All right, so the salmon roll part might be a little crazy, but I also personally just love salmon rolls, so I don't mind adding it to it. It has like that little burst of umami flavor. I will say I also have to credit a lot to this pasta sauce. Thank you, Alvin. I would not mind eating this every day. I mean, I will say it is a little bit extravagant. There are three types of ravioli in here after all, but for a plate that is so orange, I'm really surprised that all the flavors kind of work together. All right, so I am going to finish up my meal now, but I will have a snack session no matter what. Gotta keep my energy up, so I'll check in with you guys later. All right, friends, it is around 3 p.m.-ish right now, and my friend just dropped off this beautiful savory squash tart from one of my favorite bakeries here. I'm gonna cut up a slice for myself. Here we go. All right, I'm just gonna go right for it. Mmm, squash is so tender. Like when you roast squash, it's like just a natural creaminess. Wow, this is exactly the kind of energy I needed for the rest of today. I am going to savor the rest of this bite and then get back to work. See you later for dinner. Work just ended and I am ready to get started on dinner. Here's what we have for ingredients. So for this meal, I only have a few things. I have this risotto. It is made with pumpkin and also amaretti. I'm assuming this is going to be on the sweeter side, but I might be wrong. I guess this one's more of a yellowish orange. Then next up, I have this pumpkin bisque, half a pumpkin here. And then I have the golden berries that we saw briefly in the morning. And then I also have some chili oil. So once again, I may be doing an unusual combination where I'm gonna be adding chili oil. I guess it's kind of like fusion-ish. And I mean, chili oil is very orange. I also have this bag of tortilla chips. This is really cool because the chips are actually colored with things like tomato powder, carrot powder, and pumpkin powder. I think I might use this to plate it up later. Going back to the dish, I am thinking of using this half of a pumpkin as a bowl. It's kind of ambitious, maybe. I am going to pretty much just scoop out the seeds and then wrap this up in foil and toss it in the oven. All right, and now that the pumpkin has been roasting for a little bit, I'm gonna get started on the risotto mix. And I'm pretty much just going to stir this until it's brown. There's like a good bit of pumpkin in here, so that's really nice. I'm just going to gradually add water until it becomes fully cooked. I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of this along with the water to hopefully add to the color um, as well as the flavor. Again, not really sure if this is going to work out. So it's been around 15 minutes. I've pretty much just been gradually adding water into the risotto mix. Um, as well as some of the pumpkin bisque. And this is what it looks like now. There's like a nice consistency. I've also taken out my pumpkin half and this is what it looks like now, a hollowed out little bowl. So then the next step now is to take my risotto and put it in here. All right, it is coming together. I have my little pumpkin bowl. I am going to very quickly drizzle on this chili oil on top. Pretty much what's left is to just plate up the rest of this dish and then dinner will be served. All right, and it is done. I can finally sit down and this is dinner for today. Look at that. You can see the golden berries on top, the risotto, the pumpkin, and the tortilla chips at the bottom. Looks pretty good, right? Honestly, this idea could be great for like if you have 
some sort of chip dipping in the middle, maybe like an orange themed one. Let's dig in. There's definitely some fusion going on here. It's definitely like savory in the sense of like um, the onion and the garlic, which I think was already in the risotto mix. So I'm gonna scoop up some of that pumpkin. It's like super pumpkin-y, which makes sense. But the texture of the pumpkin, because it's been roasted in the oven for a while, it's so soft, it adds to the creaminess of the dish. Now this is me thinking, like, can you imagine this, but with like pumpkin bisque in the middle or pumpkin soup? Ooh, that would be so good. So the chili oil does obviously have a kick to it. So it almost changes the dish completely into something else. It's not a bad thing. It makes the two bites I had taste like two completely different meals. Mm. Also, I forgot to say that I have my mango passion fruit tea here. It is very orange, right? It's like different shades of orange going on in there. Mm. I'm just gonna take my time and slowly make my way through this. And then once I clean up and have a little more stomach space, we can finally end with dessert. All right, it is pretty late now and I'm actually not that hungry anymore. I'm also, I think, experiencing pumpkin fatigue. Originally, I wanted to get pumpkin pie, but then I was like, no. So in its place for dessert, I am just ending today with this frozen persimmon. Super interesting. I'm wondering if it's some sort of sorbet situation. So it is pretty much just the fruit itself and... Oh my God. Maybe I shouldn't have taken such a big bite, but this is really, really pleasant. Honestly, kind of a perfect, light, refreshing way to end Today, I think doing orange food during this time of year is honestly a great, fun challenge, mainly because there's so many seasonal items that fit under the category, and I think that's why I ended up being able to find a lot of things. But yeah, I had a lot of fun putting together these recipes, and I think at this point, there's really only one color left, white foods, unless you guys have something else. But otherwise, I will see you guys then.